Hello, welcome back to FPL graduates. My name is Ben. And my name is Josh. And we're going to be going through seven differentials that you need to look out for. Right, so it is seven days to go until the Premier League starts. And we're going to go through seven differential options that you should be looking out for. Yeah, there's a lot of different players that maybe not a lot of people are picking. There's a lot of template teams that you're seeing over on Twitter and a lot of high ownership as well and players that realistically should not be owned that much. Yeah, so let's get straight into it. And the first player that I'm picking as a differential pick is Gabriel Jesus. At 5% ownership, around about thereabouts, for £9.5 million, he could be starting for Man City with Aguero's injury and he could be getting loads of goals. Yeah, starting off for the season, it's different to the end of last season where Man City didn't have anything to play for. I think you'll see a lot of goals from Gabriel Jesus and even assists because that Man City team just loves to score. Yeah, he was one of the players who was at the top of the league for big chances that he had. And if he converts those big chances, he's going to start the season off very well. So, my differential pick number two is going to be Chris Basham. So the Sheffield United defender is currently owned by 2.6% of people, in contrast to John Egan, who's owned by nearly 20% of players. They're the same price, they're in the same team, they get roughly the same minutes. It's literally just because John Egan got a couple of goals towards the end of last season, and that's why everyone's gone for him. It's crazy that people jumped on this John Egan bandwagon when there are so many other quality uh, Sheffield United defenders. Yeah, you can even get their fullbacks for 0.5 more, which I strongly suggest considering how important they are in their like, build up. Uh, but Basham, he did score a couple of goals last season just towards the start, and maybe a lot of people need to start to look in towards him. Yeah, let's go into the third pick. My third option to go for as differential is none other than Arsenal's Nicolas Pepe. At £8 million, he could be incredible. He's going into his Second full season at the, uh, at the club, and he could get lots of points, settled in, start scoring goals, start assisting a Bamiyan, and we could see someone who massively rises in price if he gets the minutes and the points. 100%. So, going on to number four, I've gone with Riyad Mahrez. Again, below 3% ownership. He's 8.5 million. He literally scored like so many points last year. I think he was like fifth in midfielder category. He's a ridiculous player. Obviously, it is a question of when and where he'll play. But I think now that David Silva's gone, you'll see Foden move back into midfield. and then So, he has more of an opportunity to start out wide. And I think he's just a great asset. Mahrez had one of the best minutes, minutes to points ratio in the league. Like He didn't get loads of minutes, but when he did, he was explosive. He's a great player, and I definitely think people should look at him. Uh, because he's around the same price as Ziyech, and everyone keeps getting him in. So why not get Mahrez in? He's proven. Okay, at number five, I'm going to go for Joe Gomez of Liverpool. He's less than 10% owned. He's only 5.5 million, he's a full million cheaper than Virgil van Dijk and is likely to get a similar amount of points as the Dutch centre-back. Uh, yeah, Joe Gomez, he's obviously might not get as many minutes in that Liverpool team because he'll be rotating with Joel Matip, but again, a decent option and for such a low price to get into that Liverpool defence. It's a no-brainer, really. Yeah, I do think he's going to play a lot more minutes because when him and Van Dijk play together, they do concede less goals. So we can see that as he's a bit of a younger player as well, coming into his prime, he's only going to get better and he's only going to play more. Yeah. So the sixth differential that we're choosing today is going to be Matt Ritchie, a little cheap budget enabler, coming in at 5 million, a 0.5 cheaper than Alan St. Maximan, and the guy tends to have better stats than him. So he's obviously selected by less than 1% of players. He takes set pieces, he's on penalties, um, he's a great little asset to have. Yeah, he is a great asset, Matt Ritchie. Uh, he is playing in a solid Newcastle team, they look quite good post uh, lockdown, so we can hope and see that they will produce some similar performances to that. Yeah, he was playing in a left wing kind of role, which was similar to what he played under Eddie Howe at Bournemouth. So. I think Steve Bruce will get the most out of him. Let's just hope he doesn't get reverted back to left-back with maybe a new sign or something, but it's definitely one to watch. 
So, at number seven, our final differential pick to go for is none other than Crystal Palace's new man in midfield, Eze. Yeah, he's a very young and promising player, and I think this is the move that he's been waiting for for quite a while now. He's been boss in the championship. He's a great player and very skillful too. Yeah, he is a very skillful player. We can see him. He's going to be playing either in left wing or in attacking midfield role, supporting the likes of Wilfred Zaha and uh, Ayu. So he could get a few goals cutting inside like he likes doing. Makes defenders look silly when he does that and he will score a few goals. A lot of people will be worried about the output of Crystal Palace's attack, but I think that's why they've brought him in. Someone with a bit more creativity and be able to score, hopefully, some goals and get some assists. I mean, looking at, I think, five goals, five assists for Eze in his first season. I think that would be a good output. I think he could get more, you know. For, for what he brings to the team, he's definitely going to improve that attacking output of Crystal Palace, make them a lot more dangerous, and it would, there will be a team that could kill a few clean sheets of other defenders in the league. So that has been our differential picks. If you've got any more, let us know in the comments down below and let us know if you're going to be bringing any of the ones that we spoke about in today's video into your team. Yeah, as always, like, comment, subscribe. I've been Ben. I've been Josh. And that has been FPL Graduates. See you later.